So you might find you get some cool post-process materials um, from one source or another, uh, and they would usually have something that's telling you to put it in this post-process area. So it's a material that you can add in as like a post-process. So if you do that, um, it will add to the overall scene, but it won't add to the footage in the foreground. So you've got this post-process volume, it should have infinite extent, yeah. Then we go down to material. We can add this, uh, this, this lens distortion material uh, into here. So there we got that. Now we got some, we got some lens distortion. Uh, if we create a material instance of it, we could then see the, see the changes that we're making to it. And you know, this kind of bow distortion can give us like a fisheye effect, or you know, just a general kind of eerie, eerie effect, or like an anamorphic lens effect even. So. Uh, if we jump into the composite, we can see that these edges have all been distorted, but the uh, the talent here is not distorted. We can tweak these materials a little bit uh, to, instead of changing the 3D scene, we can make a material that changes this flat 2D texture. It just takes a couple tweaks to the material to make it work, and it can be different material to material, but there's a few things to look out for that I'll go over here. So if we check out the distortion, um, material here uh, we can see that it's taking the screen position input data and it's uh changing the scene texture so post processing input scene texture so this node here we can swap out and that means we can uh, make this affect a texture instead of instead of affecting the whole scene so let's make a copy of this material copy and paste it here and we'll call this tp lens distortion for transform pass so we know this is a composure specific material now and this transform pass can go in here and um, we know with Composure Transform Passes that they, they have some uh, material inputs, some input elements. So we need a texture input, texture parameter 2D. And we'll call this pre-pass. And we can pop this in here. And we also want the alpha. So we can change this to output alpha. And we'll grab the alpha from the texture, because that's going to be the same. It's just going to be distorted by the way that we've distorted it. So wherever you've seen this, see, see the scene texture 2D and it's got UVs input, UV input, you can quite often change this for the UV input of the texture we have here. So now we can see that it is changing these edges and <laughs> here, here in the composite we can see that we've got that distortion carrying through. It's obviously a bit extreme so we're going to want to tone that down a bit. With that you can use all the range of post-process materials that are out there and literally make your own custom ones and make sure they are added to an overall comp, you know? So we've got this, this raindrop kind of effect. You can make your own one of these and uh, lay it over both layers, therefore kind of making this all sit together in the same kind of space a bit nicer. So you can make changes to your post-process volume here. You can do things like chromatic aberration, but this won't carry through to the over, over the top layer. Um, there are a couple of things in transform passes. You can go to compositing post-process pass and you can you can do things like lens bloom pass. Um, it's just a couple kind of little effects that they've made, um, which you know can can help situate your talent in the screw in the scene a bit better. But um, I think they're a little bit they're a little bit weird, um, but they can be really useful.